After working on that BDPS 300 yesterday, the Sony Blu-ray player that would not read DVDs, a bunch of people in the comments commented about updating the firmware, and I didn't update the firmware, and that should fix it. So let's update the firmware and see what happens. So I'm going to check the firmware version on this BDPS 300. We're going to check the firmware version, and we're going to uh, see if we can update the firmware and see if that will fix the problem that we're having with DVD playback. I doubt that it will because I think the laser shot, but it could be bad firmware. And how you do that is you need a remote control. Go to the home screen and we're going to go into setup. So go to setup. Video setup. Press OK. Press OK. Now we get down TV type. And I'm going to press the blue button on here. And it's going to display that the firmware version on here is firmware 3.2. And that's an old, very old version. Let's see what's available for this unit and make a firmware update disk. So I'm on the Sony support page and we can see that the firmware, the current firmware is 6.2. So we're gonna to continue to download the update and make a CDR, which will have this, the new software on it. So I got a blank, brand new blank CDR we're going to load the firmware onto a CD and then follow the directions. Basically put it into the player and let the player spend 15 or 20 minutes or however long it takes to update. And then we'll see whether that fixes DVD playback. So let's get downloading. So first we're going to download the update software. It'll be an executable file that we're going to download to a temporary folder. And then we'll run the executable file and that will create the disk. It'll create the ISO file and burn it to the disk. So I've now downloaded the software. I'm going to launch it now. So I go to my download folder and I'm going to double click on here and I'm going to run the software. It says please t uh, type the location where you want to place your extracted files. So I've created a folder. Oh, color balance adjusting on my camera while I go here. So what? 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 The cluster size of this system is not supported. What the? Okay, I got the file downloaded. I just had to put it into a separate folder, not a subfolder. So I've got the ISO file here. So now we're going to burn this to the uh, CD. So I've loaded up my um, software. I'm going to burn a disk image. So I'm going to go down. Whoop, where are you? Burn, di burn disk image right there. Okay, I'm going to drag it in to the, um, the folder and burn it. I've got my file here. I'm going to select the image to burn. And select open and we're going to uh, verify recorded data. I've got my CD installed. My blank disk. So I'm going to click burn and this will burn that image to the CD and verify that it is written correctly. So it should only take a minute or so because the drive I've got is pretty quick. And it's not a very big file, it's only about 50 megabytes. So this should write this image out pretty quick and uh, verify it and then we can take that and put it into the player and let the player do its update. Once it's updated, fingers crossed, it might or might not fix the DVD reading capability. If it does fix it, I'll be very happy. There we go, image is now completely verified and burned. Basically the update is pretty simple. We're just going to put the disk into the drive and it should automatically start writing or start updating the software. We should get the disk download message which will indicate that it started. So let's go and pop the uh, disk in the drive and it should take about 20 minutes. So according to this, it says about 20 minutes the disk tray will open. It says here, warning, after about 20 minutes, it said uh, the firmware update is complete when download OK appears. So we're going to have to wait. So do not operate or power off the player until this message is displayed. Doing so may result in your player being unresponsive and requiring repair. In other words, bricked. So let's go start the process.
I should get a message here momentarily. Let's see if we get the message that we need. Telling me it's going to do its update. There we go. Disk download. So now we just sit back and wait while the player does its thing. So it's loading the software now from the disk. It'll load it into RAM first, and then that should then flash. Basically, it'll load it into RAM, erase the flash memory, and then download it into the flash memory and reboot. So this process takes some time, so we'll just be patient. On the TV, we get the loading message. Oh, they're playing some good tunes today on Wave 98.3. I tell you, this station's playing some of the greatest stuff. Best station, I think, in Vancouver right now. We're midway through the disc download. The screen has gone blank on the TV now, so it's doing something as we patiently wait. It's been about five minutes so far. Oh, data check. Data check downloads. Here we go. Data check downloads. Writing flash. Here we go. Stuff is happening. Fingers crossed this is going to fix the ability to read DVDs. Because if this doesn't fix it, then what I suspect when I looked at this yesterday is that the laser is bad. But the firmware was old, and we all know how firmware can fix things. Like perhaps it just wasn't quite reading the right flash. Here we go. Right flash two. So there's a bunch of them here that are being written. Well, we'll just observe what's going on here for this process for anyone watching. So they know what to do if you've got one of these units and you need to update the firmware. It's actually pretty simple. Make yourself a download disk, pop it in the player, and let it do its stuff. So it's writing the different flashes. And I say there's a possibility that this is going to fix the problem. We're hoping that this fixes the problem. A lot of times problems are fixed by software. Something over time just gets out of spec and it no longer can read. I know that the red laser is coming on because we can see it. It's just not reading. So it's either the laser itself is FUBAR or it's the software that's bad. I'm hoping it's the software because I'd love to have this player operational. Having a player like this with all these analog outputs is great because the new ones just have HDMI output which is kind of useless. If you want to use it as a CD player for example just to play CDs into your stereo well they're useless if you've only got an HDMI out. But this is uh, time consuming. I think I have another one of these players kicking around somewhere too so I'll have to go take a look for it. If I do I'll update the update to it as well. Here we go, right, right subcon, it says now. So it's doing its stuff, download, okay. Excellent. Now we gotta wait for this thing to tell me the update's finished. The disk just ejected. It says don't touch it yet, don't do anything, just leave it sit. It's going to reboot. Probably load the disk in again and, and check that everything's been updated and then give me the update okay because that's generally what they do is they will reboot the unit will power down power up again load the disk it will reload the the uh, image from the disk and compare it to what's in memory and if everything's good then it will give you the okay that it's all complete download okay we're powering the unit up now and it should take about 90 seconds or so for it to boot up. Now I've got the power on message and the unit is now booting up. We're going to check the firmware version as soon as it boots up. And then go to video setup, TV type, and then press the blue button. And it says that I'm at 6.2. So we know that the software has updated. Excellent. So let's get out of here and I'll try loading a disk. I'm going to try loading a Blu-ray, or not a Blu-ray, but a DVD-R uh, and see whether it, will, whether it will read that. 
Is it going to read? Yeah, unfortunately, I got the can't play this disc, so it's not a firmware problem. I'll try a Blu-ray disc this time, a BDRE. Let's see if it'll read this one. There we go, load. It's reading this disc. And like before, it plays this disc just fine. So we still have a problem reading uh, DVDs. Obviously the problem is what I first suspect, it's the laser that's bad. Oh well, that's how you update the firmware. Maybe I'll grab my other player and update the firmware on it, just so that they're both current while I've got the disc handy here. So here's my other DVPS 300. As you can see, it's still got the sticker on it. This one's been in my setup for years. I bought this when it was new. I paid a lot of money for it too, when it was new. Or relatively new, I think I bought a display model. But I probably paid about $350 or $400 for this one when I got it. And it's, uh, never, I don't think it's ever had any updates, so we'll check the updates on this and see what it's at. This one's also sitting at 3.8. So I think we'll update this one while my update disc is fresh before it gets damaged or scratched. I'll do the update on this one as well, and then we'll check this one over and make sure that everything's working on it. So once again, the process is just install the disc and uh, close the disc tray and it will start it up and do its thing and then once it's updated I'll make sure that this one plays all the formats of disc. You can tell from the dust on here this thing hasn't been used in several years. It was actually the Blu-ray player that was uh, in the family room when the kids were younger they used to play all their movies and stuff. So this one's got a fair number of hours on it, mostly DVDs as well. That picture looks kind of busy doesn't it? Like there's noise in the black. I didn't think I saw that on the other one. I may have to plug, once this is done, I'll plug the other one in and just take a look at the black background because maybe the power supply on this one is starting to, you see that? Maybe the power supply on this one is starting to crap out. If that's the case, and the other one is clear, you see that? See that? That noise there? If the other one's clear, I'm going to swap the power supplies over and put this power supply in the one with the dead laser. Why not, right? Might as well have one that's working properly myself and not have to repair it. And all right, update's done. You can see it's at version 6.2. Let's try playing a DVD on this player. Got my DVD. And will it read the disc? Looking good. What's going on here? Oh, maybe I gotta push the OK button. There we go. Gotta use the remote to start this thing up or it won't play, but there it is, playing DVD. Nice vacuum fluorescent display showing me my time on the disc and what uh, track number, what index number and what uh, title number I'm playing. You see, this busyness of the, uh, the black screen kind of bothers me because I, I don't remember seeing that on the one that's other one that's not working. You see all this busyness? I'm going to plug the other one in and see if I get that noise. If not, we'll do a power supply swap so that the good power supply stays on the machine I'm keeping. See what I mean? It's not as busy, right? The other one had a lot of noise in the black here. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot more noise in here, unless it's the black level, the way the black level's set up. But this one definitely has more noise in that picture. You can see it right around the Sony logo. It's like the grays are like the black level's a lot higher. Now it might be just a setup. It might be a, the black level might be set up a little different. I figured out where all the noise was coming from. There's a black level adjustment on these units when you're in the setup mode. You gotta be playing a disc before it to do it. Yeah, I gotta start playing. So let me just get this thing playing. Then go into AV control. Video control. And the black level had been cranked all the way up like that and then that resulted in the picture being quite noisy as you can see all the noise that's in the picture you can see it all the interference it was just the black level had been cranked to say this this player my kids were using so um, and I haven't used it for years, so that was all. That's why that was. I was looking at it saying, why is the picture so noisy? Well, it's because the black level was was cranked up 
so bloody high that uh, all the artifacts and the noise were showing up on the TV. And it wasn't showing up on the HDMI output, just on the um, the composite output, and probably show up on component too. So we'll just go back into the settings, AV control, video control, and uh, detailed settings, and we'll take this back down, make it a little more right in the middle, I guess, is probably the best place for it. And then we can, of course, we can tweak it, right? We can look at it on the picture itself. There we go. Get out of there. And then when I stop it, we don't have all that noise. Picture looks good. Okay, so updated. Didn't have to do anything else to it. Just, just adjust the just tweak it and everything else is looking good now. Thanks for watching.